Have you ever wondered what neuroscience has to do with drug addiction? Well, wonder no more because I have your answer. For simplistic learning purposes, I'll be using an inaccurate model to show the interaction between neurons, but the concept is still 99.98% accurate. But first, let's travel to the brain. Actually, let's go further than that. Let's go into the synapse. Hey, welcome to the synapse. Well, one of 100 trillion synapses in your brain. Be careful and try not to get hit by the chemical or electrical currents that the neurons are constantly firing. Now let's welcome soma positive and soma negative. Remember the firing neurons? Well, this is where they are housed, inside the soma. Connected to the soma positive is an axon. This is a long stick-like part that transports the electrical or chemical activity from the soma positive to the soma negative. You may notice this weird fatty-like substance around the axon. It's called myelin, and it creates an electrical insulating layer, kind of like the wires you see hanging from the tall poles on the streets. At the very end of the axon, we have an axon terminal, and inside the axon terminal, we have synaptic vessels. This is where a neurotransmitter lives, breathes, and eats, or maybe just lives. The axon terminal is responsible for releasing the neurotransmitters inside the synaptic vessel. These neurotransmitters are responsible for transmitting signals across the synapse from one soma to the other. Now turn your attention to soma negative. Attached to the soma, we have dendrites, and attached to the dendrites, we have receptor sites. Their job is to receive the neurotransmitter. Now this is where the fun starts. The four major neurotransmitters that regulate mood are serotonin, dopamine, GABA, and noradrenaline. Your nervous system does constant checkups and regulates the amount of these neurotransmitters. However, this time we'll be focusing on dopamine. This particular neurotransmitter affects your emotions, movements, and your sensations of pleasure and pain. After we eat, our body processes the food and in the process, dopamine is being exchanged between the somas. However, a person who just used a substance or a drug such as tetrahydrocannabinol has altered the levels of dopamine that is being exchanged. This potentially causes an overflow of dopamine. And as a result, levels of pleasure and relaxation increase while levels of pain decrease. Now this is the aftermath. If substances are constantly used, our bodies develop what is called drug tolerance. In other words, this is a person's decreased response to a drug. Now that the person has developed tolerance, they have to constantly use the drug, not for effect, but just to even feel normal since the body is taking the overflow of dopamine as the baseline, and the natural baseline, as you saw before, just isn't enough to support our emotions, movements, and sensations of pleasure and pain, thus resulting in addiction to drugs.